You do it, Tom, Inspector. What now? Stand up, please, Mr. Ferrers. Oh, Mr. Ferrers, is it? That's more like it. Are you going to be polite to me too, Lestrade? Not from choice, I not know. Well, there's a surprise. What do you want? You're free to go, sir. Gentlemen! Gentlemen! As I have said all through this sorry affair, I am a benefactor. Not a murderer. Then who do you think killed Mr. Radcliffe? That's yeah. all. Thank you, gentlemen. Alice? I've got a cab waiting. My father's had a very trying few days and he needs to rest. Mr. Ferris, would you say that justice has been done? Yes. I said that's all. Thank you. Come on, Father. Uh, what about you, Miss Ferris? Any comments? Oh, save your breath, Jack. I have a statement to make. Well, who the devil are you, sir? My name is George Radcliffe. Don't expect me to say that justice has been done. My father was killed, murdered, because he dared to speak out against that man. My father believed that the guilty should be made to pay for their crimes. And so do I. The Ferrers Documents by Bert Cools with Clive Medicine as Sherlock Holmes and Andrew Sachs as Dr. John Watson, and featuring Stephen Thorne as Inspector Lestrade and Thomas Arnold as Constable Dawkins. The Ferrers Documents. Come on, sir. Chin up. Damn it, Tom. Years I've been after that man. I really thought this time... You'll get your chance. Here. Thanks. Oh, I hope you're right. Well, maybe you are. Never say die, eh? That's the spirit, sir. Never say die. To nailing ferrers. To nailing ferrers. Hmm. Mr. Holmes, I, I assume you're familiar with the circumstances of my husband's death? Uh, to a certain extent, Mrs. Radcliffe. I thought you always followed such things. Oh, George, please. Well, that's what it says in those stories. And Mr. Holmes has been engaged on another case. So I know only what has appeared in the papers, which is remarkably little. In the early hours of the morning just over a week ago, as your husband was returning from a public meeting in Aldgate, he was attacked in the street and fatally stabbed. Yes, you have our sympathies, both of you. Thank you, Doctor. Uh, the late Mr Radcliffe was widely respected for his campaign against the slum housing in the east end of the capital. The subject of his address on the night in question was Mr Robert Ferrers, the owner of a large number of common lodging houses and other buildings in the area. Ruins not fit for pigs. Uh, your anger does you credit. Somebody has to care about these things. I intend to carry on with my father's work. Well, then I recommend a cooler head and a less emotional approach. You must forgive him, Mr Holmes. This is a difficult time. Perhaps so, but it's logic and reason which defeats criminals, not temper and irrationality. Hmm? Now, three days after the attack, the police arrested Ferrers for the crime. Why? What was their evidence? They had a witness. A woman came forward and said she'd seen the whole thing. And she identified Ferrers as the killer. She was absolutely certain it was him. Well, then why was he released? The woman disappeared. Well, it's not hard to work out what happened to her, is it? Well, it doesn't have to be Sherlock Holmes. Ferris had her killed, too. Uh, Mr Radcliffe, anything said in this room remains confidential, but I strongly advise you not to make statements like that in public. Do the police believe she's dead? No. According to Mr Lestrade, they're still searching for her. But I, I could see in his eyes that he thinks it's hopeless. Because the woman is a prostitute. How could you possibly know that? No respectable female would be out alone at that hour and in that place. Therefore, she was not a respectable female. So, no fixed address, and probably using an assumed name, 
Impossible to trace. Ferrers found her easily enough. Or his thugs did. Or she simply thought twice about testifying and decided to change her name again and disappear. Whatever the facts, without her testimony, Lestrade evidently has nothing. And so my father's killer walks free. Will you take our case, sir? An unremarkable murder. Oh, for God's sake! Well, I state the facts. A crime with no singularity, no distinguishing features, in an area noted for petty assaults. Mr. Radcliffe, your father wasn't the first to speak out against Ferrers. No, certainly not. You know, the man simply shrugs off such things. Why did he feel particularly threatened by your father? Why should he feel the need to kill him? That, sir, is what we were hoping you'd find out for us. It seems that our faith was misplaced. George! I'll be waiting downstairs. The great detective. Ah. I'm so sorry. There is one possibility... Mr. Holmes? If your husband did discover something truly criminal against Ferrers, but hadn't yet made it public... But Ferrers somehow knew about it. Yes, that had occurred to me. That was perceptive of you. Have you looked for anything of the sort? Oh, yes. I, I went through all Jonathan's notes, his files, everything. I found nothing. Well, he might have kept something that important more securely than the rest of the material. Mm, perhaps in a different location. That's excellent, Watson. Mrs. Radcliffe, my advice to you is to look again. And if anything comes to light? Well, then, by all means, let us know straight away. Well, is he going to help us? You were insufferably rude, young man. Is he going to help? He gave me some very useful advice. Now, please call a cab. I want to go home. Oh, there they go. Poor woman. Uh, what about that prostitute? Huh? Perhaps she didn't change her mind. Perhaps she just lied to gain some attention. Mm, that and a couple of hours in the warmth of the yard and some of the strayed's tea and biscuits. And, well, and then she thought better of it. So it was a simple robbery with violence? Ah, uh, perhaps, yes. You're not sure? Well, I... I need more facts. I thought you weren't taking the case. Well, for my own satisfaction. Ah, you're interested in Ferris? I want to see the man who inspired such loathing in Mr. Radcliffe Jr. That's a remarkable level of hatred against an individual he hardly knows. Thank you for agreeing to see me. Why should I not? I have nothing to hide. An impressive display. You didn't come here to talk about my orchids, Mr. Holmes. No. Then let's get on with it. You've been asked to inquire into the death of Mr. Jonathan Radcliffe, probably by his widow, and you've come to see if I look like a murderer. It's my experience, Mr. Ferrers, that murderers look exactly the same as everyone else. Well, then, did you propose to ask me if I killed him? Did you? No, sir, I did not. I regret his death. As far as I could see, he was a good man, sincere, but like so many good men, he was also naive. Are you familiar with the poorer parts of this city? Intimately. Then you know that those wretched people can be helped only one step at a time. Their most urgent needs are for shelter, beds and enough food to keep them from starving. I provide the first two at a price which allows them to afford the third. And I'm pilloried for it by do-gooders who want to see the entire population of the East End housed in the Savoy by this time next week. Yes, sir. Excuse me, Father. Mr. Holmes, I'm sorry, I've only just been told you were here. Good afternoon, Miss Ferrers. May I order you some tea? Thank you, no. Stop fussing, girl. Leave us. In a moment. Mr. Holmes... I told you to leave us. When I've had my say. Mr. Holmes, my father isn't well. Please don't exhaust him. You may rest assured of that. Thank you, sir. I'll be close by if you should need me. She seems to think I'm made of eggshells. Well, Mr. Holmes... Have you learned enough? Yes, Mr. Ferrers. I believe I have. Hmm. Are you sure you won't have some more? Oh, to be truthful, I, I don't have much of an appetite. Well, I won't save the London poor by going without yourself. Maybe not. But I might at least feel a bit better about things. I applaud your sentiment, if not your logic. <coughs> Ferrers sees himself as the saviour of the homeless masses. 
Well, he put up a, a perfectly reasonable argument. The devil quoting scripture. Hmm, perhaps. One thing about the family will please you. What? They read the Strand magazine. Hmm. Oh, so does half of London. Do you think he did it? Based on what we know so far, no, I don't. The daughter is interesting. I didn't know there was a daughter. Around 30, unmarried, unusually strong will for a woman. Interesting. It's all right, Sarah, I'll get it. Well, I suggest you say what you've come to say and then leave. I suppose it was foolish of me to expect a civil reception. Please come in, Miss Ferrers. Would you care for some tea? Uh, thank you, Mrs. Radcliffe. No. I've come to give you some advice. What makes you think I'm in need of advice? If I were in your position... Uh, if you were in my position, you'd be newly widowed and facing an uncertain future. Uh, yes. I'm sorry. But you're trying to reopen the case against my father. How do you know that? I urge you not to. What possible good could come of it? Justice. Uh, good evening, Mr. Radcliffe. Justice for my mother's husband. Justice for his family. Justice for any other good men who are no longer alive George. because they threatened your father's cosy way of life. And yours. I shall overlook that slander. But please believe me. It really wouldn't be a good idea for you to accuse my father again. And if we do, what will happen? I've said all I intend to say. Please take my advice. Good evening to you both. Mm. Will you tell Mrs. Radcliffe that you spoke to Ferrers? Only if she finds something that incriminates him. Do you think she will? I believe you've heard the last of this whole affair. Yes, I think you're right. Oh, oh I'm, I'm going to bed. I shan't disturb you. No, 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 of course not. Good night. Good night. Answer me. I, I warn you, I, I'm armed. Hello, Mother. What in the world do you think you're doing? I'd have thought that was obvious. I'm taking that man's useful advice. I'm looking for whatever it was that Father discovered. But at this time in the morning, are you insane? So everyone seems to think. Why are you wearing a coat? Have you been out? Oh, very good. Yes, I've been out. Out and about. You're drunk. Look at the state of you. What have you been doing? Don't question me, Mother. I'm the head of the house now, you know. Georgie. Don't call me that. I'm not a child anymore. I'm going to bed. <laughs> Watson. Watson, wake up. What? What? what time is it? Approaching 5.15. Oh. Into your clothes and downstairs, Doctor. There is some urgency. Oh, well, well, what's happened? A note from Lestrade. He's waiting for us in a derelict house in the East End. Why, for heaven's sake? Because Robert Ferrers has been murdered. Good morning, Lestrade. Mr. Holmes, Doctor. Inspector, I appreciate your sending for me. The daughter told me you'd been round there asking questions. I want to know exactly how you're involved. I'll be delighted to tell you, but perhaps it can wait. You'd better come inside. Watch yourselves, though, and stay close to my light. Uh, this place isn't safe. Yes. Oh. Oh. oh, it's a wonder 
it's still standing. Yeah. Uh, when was the fire? Uh, at least five years ago from the state of the wood. Six. Nasty affair. A lot of deaths. Thirteen families wiped out. And that wasn't all. It's in here, gentlemen. And it isn't pleasant. Uh -huh. Oh. That's a savage attack. I can't be sure in this light, but I think there's at least 20 separate stab wounds. Uh, may I have the lantern? Here. Thank you. Thank you. Now, uh, uh, you two wait here, please. Oh. Who found the body? An old woman. Lives rough here. Uh, who else has been in this room since the murder? Her, the constable she called, me and Dawkins. Dawkins? Oh, me, Doctor. Detective Constable Tom Dawkins. Good morning. Good morning. I've got the men out knocking on doors, sir. See if anyone heard anything. Good lad. It's an honour to meet you, Mr Holmes. I've studied all your cases in the Strand. I hope you can tell fact from fiction. <laughs> Nothing fictional about that body. Oh, I didn't want this. I wanted to nail Ferrers fair and square. For the state of his buildings? Well, that's part of it. Some of them are death traps. Well, just look around. Oh, this was one of his. It's what they call poetic justice, isn't it? But it's not just the buildings, it's, it's what goes on in them. If you were a villain looking for a hideaway or a place to stash loot, Ferrers was your man. How is it you never put him away? He was clever, Doctor. Always managed to stay one step in front of the law. Well, you've got him now, however it happened. Oh, how it happened's plain enough. Someone lured him here or forced him here, one of the two, then just went for him. Well, there must have been quite a struggle. Now, that's the old thing. What is? The fact that there are no signs of any sort of fight. Strange, isn't it, sir? First thing I noticed. Excellent. Have you nearly finished here, Lestrade? Just waiting for the cart to move the body. Then we'll see you back at the yard. Uh, what, Watson? Yes. It's remarkable. No struggle. Uh, no signs of a struggle. The absence of clues can be a valuable clue in itself. What do you mean? The killer went to a great deal of effort to clean up the scene. He wiped the floor, then spread fresh dust and ashes. When we get there, I'll wait upstairs for the strain. Hmm? You go to the mortuary and wait for the body. A good look in decent light should tell us a lot. Right then, Doctor. Good God. Yes. I couldn't see him this clearly at the scene. We're looking for a madman. Quite a wide blade. Double-edged. That's on. What is? Well, look there. And, and there. Actually, it's on almost all the wounds. You see? Um, there, that, that mark. Sort of square indentation at one end of the cut. You're right, sir. What does it mean? I'm not sure, but it's unusual, and anything unusual is valuable. Yeah. Uh, I'm getting too old for this cracker dawn stuff. Hmm. Watson told me once he wished criminals would operate to a convenient timetable. Very tidy, that would be. <laughs> <laughs> Wouldn't it just? But there's about as much chance of me becoming chief constable. Stuck behind a desk all day, you'd hate it. No, oh, I don't know. Out in the field, that's a young man's game. Dawkins will do well for himself. Right, lad. Yeah, so, how do you come to be mixed up with the Ferrers family? Mrs Radcliffe came to Baker Street. With that hot-headed son of hers? He was there, yes, making his feelings very clear. Did you know that he threatened Ferrers in front of a crowd? No, but I can't say I'm surprised. Criminals should be made to pay for their crimes. What do you think? He was completely convinced of the man's guilt, and he has the passion. And the strength. Yes. Ah, the stupid young fool. They left you alone, Doctor? Oh, I think they trust me not to steal anything. That's your impeccable bedside manner. Rather wasted under the circumstances. Yes, I suppose so. Anything interesting? Definitely. Now, <clears throat> look at the wounds. Ah. Yes, wide-bladed knife. Uh, Two-edged. Exceedingly sharp and not too long. Mm -hmm. some, on most of these cuts, I, I kind of drove the blade in right up to the hilt. Leaving those curious indentations. Yes. 
What do you think caused them? Well, presumably they were made by the cross guard. Then why only at one end? Uh, the design isn't symmetrical or the knife's damaged. Either way, it's a distinctive weapon. Do any of the Strade's men know about the marks? I pointed them out to Dawkins. Ah, the shining protégé. What did he make of them? Not as much as you. Good. Come on, we must get home. We should just have time for a quick breakfast before Mrs. Radcliffe calls again. Oh, she's coming back? Why? Mr. Lestrade has arrested George. Yes, I rather thought he would. Uh, does he have any evidence against my son? That's a most interesting question. What do you mean? Well, it suggests, Mrs. Radcliffe, that you believe such evidence might actually exist. Oh, dear Lord. I think you'd better tell us exactly what happened last night. I went to a pub. More than one. We'll need the names. And after you'd had a skinful, what then? I just walked. I was angry. I, I wanted to... I don't know. I wanted to think. About Robert Ferrers? Yes. And about what he did to your father? Yes. So you went to where he lives, threatened him with a knife, took him to the ruined house and killed him? No. No. Describe the state he was in. He was intoxicated. His clothes were in disarray. It looked as if he'd fallen down. Or been in a fight. Does your son own a dagger? Dagger? No, of course not. Uh, your late husband? Certainly not. He was a man of peace. Well, unless Lestrade comes up with some hard evidence, I don't think he'll be detaining your son for very long. Yes, but... But you want me to prove George's innocence. Not just for Lestrade, but for you. That's exactly it. May God forgive me. Uh, why are we back here? I wanted a more leisurely look round in better light. Ah! What do you think of that? Well, there are broken bits of wood all over this side. Oh, not like this one. Look at this edge. Uh, looks like ash. It is ash. It's forced into the grain, but the wood itself isn't so much as charred. This is the plank he used to wipe the traces from the floor. How on earth did you know it would be there? Because I hadn't found it anywhere else. Right, I'm going to take this back to Baker Street and have a proper look at it, then head for the newspaper library. Hmm. And I? Thank you for receiving me, Miss Ferrers. I appreciate your condolences, Doctor. Well, surely others have called? The neighbours? They don't know yet. Or if they've heard, they don't care. It's even possible that they're glad. Surely not. My father wasn't a popular man. The source of his wealth was no secret. And this, as we are so frequently informed, is a respectable street for respectable people. Mm. Um... Would you mind very much if I asked you about last night? I'm afraid I can't tell you anything helpful. If there had been a disturbance, would it have woken you? Oh, yes, without question. And the servants, too. But none of us heard a thing. You were right. She is interesting. Did you find out about the family? Uh, yes. Uh, the mother's dead. There are no sons, and she's the only daughter. Hmm. So presumably she inherits the empire. Hmm. Thank you, Doctor. Excellent work. Thank you. How was your afternoon? Uh, not quite so productive. I'll tell you about it on the way to the yard. Here. Mm -hmm. A summary of the press reports on that fire. Ah. Why are you interested in that? Because the site obviously holds great significance for our murderer. It couldn't have been easy to get Ferris there, so why bother if the place isn't important? That makes sense. Hmm. It's not pleasant reading. Whole families in single rooms, staircases rotten, most of the windows and the back door nailed shut. Why do that? To prevent unauthorised exits when the local supervisor called for the rents. So when the fire started, most of those people had the slightest chance of getting out. I had hoped to discover the names of the victims, but I was unlucky. None of the papers listed them. Oh, why should they? Just the anonymous East End poor? And it wasn't just the residents who died? No, at least four firemen and two passers-by perished as well. Oh. Trying to get people out. Heroes. 
dead heroes. Here you are, Inspector. Thanks, Tom. That's all the top clothes he had on last night. Ah, very good. Hmm. Ah, excellent. What have you seen? It's a question of what I haven't seen. What were you after? A pair of reddish-brown woolen gloves, very slightly damaged between the thumbs and index fingers. I should know better than to ask after all these years. Would you mind telling me why? Because whoever cleaned up the crime scene wore such a pair of gloves. How on earth do you know that, sir? The murderer used an old wooden plank to scrape the ground clear of footmarks. I have that plank at Baker Street. Well, of course you have. When I looked at it through my lens, I found a number of tiny fibres snagged in the wood. Reddish-brown wood in two places, some 24 inches apart on one of the long sides. The conclusion's obvious. That's where it was gripped as our killer dragged it across the floor. Oh, that's wonderful, Mr Holmes. Radcliffe threw the gloves away. Why? He'd have no idea how incriminating they were. The fibres are too small to see with a naked eye. Mr Holmes, are you seriously asking me to release my prime suspect on the strength of something that I can't even see? Yes, I am. I'll be a laughing stock. Inspector, what will it do for your reputation when your second arrest in a row collapses for lack of hard evidence? I can hold the boy for another 24 hours without charging him. And that's what I intend to do. You made a good case for the boy's innocence. Not really. Oh, what do you mean? Well, he could have got rid of the gloves because they were stained with blood or ashes, or simply because they reminded him of what he'd done once he returned to his senses. Will Lestrade think of that? No, I believe he'll release him. That's what I'm hoping for. Because it will please his mother? No, that's not the reason. I'd prefer not to elaborate, just at the present. Somehow I thought you'd say that. So, what now? I'm going to go home and smoke and think. It's at least a two-pipe problem. Can you entertain yourself until tonight? Ah, Doctor. I hope you passed a pleasant afternoon. I'm at my club. Huh. Have you made any progress? A little. Good. Here, this is for you. I arrived at the door at the same time as a messenger boy. It's from young Dawkins. Oh, thank you. Uh, well, well. You remember Lestrade's lost witness from the Radcliffe murder in Allgate? She's been found. Why does that concern us? Because she's dead. I'm sorry to hear it, but even so. Stabbed more than two dozen times with a wide-bladed dagger. Nothing's been touched, Mr. Holmes. Here. Thank you. I'll see about the cart. I shan't need long. Well... An interesting development, wouldn't you say? Poor woman. What does it mean? Two things. Firstly, I was wrong. There is a connection between the Radcliffe killing and Ferrer's death. And secondly? It's this murder which is the key to the whole thing. Now, let's take a look. Yes, you see? Exactly the same imprints as on Ferrer's. The same sort of ferocity. Oh, good God, she's hardly more than a child. Let's confine ourselves to what's relevant, shall we? No blood spatter on the wall, no sign of anything used to shield the killer, and no footprints on this surface. There's no need for a plank this time. Uh, look at this. There's something in her hand. Uh, scrap of paper. Ah, there's writing on it. Would you mind? No, oh, thank you. But let's see if I can release it without breaking her fingers. Ah, uh, Holmes, you're tampering with evidence. It's evidence which even the excellent Dawkins seems to have missed. Her. Ah. Well, well. Fascinating. What does it say? It says 221B Baker Street. She was coming to us. Someone advised her to see me and gave her the address. If we could discover who it was, we might be able to find out why she was coming. Stop here, please, cabby. Don't wait for me. 
No, don't cut me. I'll do it. You'll remember the message. Mr. J's compliments, and if you show your face... Your ugly, interfering face. I can't say that. Your ugly, interfering face on his turf again. He'll... Break your legs. Break your legs in so many places, you'll be able to roll them up and put them in your pocket. Very good. Oh. Now get out of my sight. <laughs> Most impressive. Who's there? Come out. If perhaps a touch conventional. Sherlock Holmes. Shinwell Johnson. Good to see you, sir. What can I do you for this time? The woman's real name was Catherine Long. She went to Johnson because he has a reputation in the East End for helping anyone in trouble. By sending them to you? Yes, if he thinks their problem will interest me. And what was her problem? She'd been persuaded to give false information to the police about the Ratcliffe murder. Then threatened with violence if she backed out. Which she did. Brave woman. According to Johnson, the girl was terrified. Absolutely terrified. With good reason, obviously. Did she tell him who was behind it? Unfortunately not. Then we'll never know. Oh, don't be so pessimistic, Doctor. When your road is closed, the logical thing to do is take an alternative route. Get your hat. We're going back to the Radcliffe house. Right, Mr Radcliffe. You're free to go. What's happened? The killer's struck again. Oh, so you know it wasn't me? Thank God. Oh, wait, who's been killed? It's not my mother. You'll find out soon enough. The inspector wants a word. The witness is dead. I'm afraid so. And we've no idea why she chose to disappear. So now you'll never be able to prove who murdered my father. Without the woman, we've no evidence at all. Oh, I wouldn't go so far as to say that. Mr. Holmes? I've just come from your mother's house, Mr. Radcliffe. She was kind enough to let me examine her husband's study. And? And I found what I expected to find. A hidden compartment in his desk. And in it, this. What is that? The late Mr. Radcliffe's proof that Robert Ferrers was a criminal. So it did exist. Does it say that father confronted him with it? Oh, it says a great many things, some of them extremely unexpected. Your father documented every aspect of Ferrer's life in the most minute detail. A man after my own heart. I'll take that then, please. I'd prefer to hang on to it for now. But it's vital evidence, sir. Yes, it needs a good deal of collating and interpreting. Give me one day and I'll be able to present you with a whole picture. Mr Holmes. You're straight, I'm asking you to trust me. In 24 hours, you know everything, and I shall remove myself entirely from the case. All the credit will be yours. I don't know. Dawkins, this doesn't go beyond this room, right? Of course not, sir. Thank you. 24 hours, and for God's sake, don't let that out of your sight. Who else knows about it? I'm the only one who's seen the contents. Its existence is known to us, Mrs Radcliffe and Watson, and in a few minutes, one other... Dr. Watson. Good evening. Good evening, Miss Ferrers. I wonder if I might come in. I have some information I think you should hear. Good morning, Detective Constable Dawkins. What's on the lights? Get your hands off me! Give it up! Dawkins, it's over! I don't think so! Oh, oh. Holmes! Dawkins, 
Unless you want a bullet through your brain, I suggest you drop the knife. Drop it! Holmes, are you all right? Yes, I, I believe it looks worse than it is. Pity. Not a word from you, thank you. Anyway, it's a small price to pay. Look at this dagger. My case is complete. Get in there! Ah! Is that any way to treat a prisoner? Shut up, or you'll get a lot worse. Easy, the straight. With respect, Doctor, I'll handle this my way. Dawkins, get on your feet! Get up. Right. Now we'll do this properly. Thomas Dawkins, you've been detained under suspicion of the willful murder suspicion? of... Suspicion? You mean you're not sure? I told you to keep quiet. Mr. Strayed, I suggest you let him talk. And I suggest you listen to Mr. Holmes. Isn't that how you get most of your results? <laughs> All right. Talk. <coughs> Just what do you want me to say? Ah, for God's sake. Tell us about your father. My father was a great man. A hero. Who died in the line of duty. Was he in the force? No. He was a fireman. He perished trying to rescue survivors from the conflagration in Terra's boarding house. And his son has been out for revenge ever since. And proud of it. I've done nothing I'm ashamed of. Good God above. Come on then, Mr Holmes. Let's have one of your brilliant speeches. Sum up the case, lay out the evidence, confound the guilty. I think he waited patiently for the opportunity to strike at Ferrers, and when Jonathan Radcliffe was killed, and it was just a random attack, Lestrade, nothing more, you saw your chance. The man you hated was an obvious candidate for the murder. All that was needed was some hard evidence. The witness? Did you pay that girl to come forward? Oh, very good. Yes, I did. Paid her well, too, double-crossing drab. But you refuse to commit perjury and condemn an innocent man. You call what he did innocent? Can you honestly stand there and tell me that Ferris didn't kill my father? Yes, I can. Not according to the law. Then the law's not enough. Perhaps not, but it's the best we've got. And that has to do. You've gone beyond the law before now. I don't recall ever hearing about you being behind bars. I made you release Ferris. What must you have been thinking? But I was tired of waiting. So you went to his house in the early hours and forced him at knife point to get dressed and go with you to the ruin. Why didn't he put up a struggle or call for help? Oh, the man was a coward. A weak coward. He could barely stand, let alone fight. Lestrade, I'll do you a favour. All these years you've been after the wrong person. Ferrers ran the houses, but it's the daughter who's behind everything else. Oh, he did eventually show some spirit, but he was no match for me. And it was then that your control snapped and you turned into a frenzied killer. Yes. It was one of the most fascinating experiences of my life. It was me, and it wasn't me. It was as if I was standing back, watching myself. I felt like you, Mr. Holmes, observing, noting the evidence. The dust and the ashes showed quite clearly what had happened. So I tidied everything up. What did you do with the gloves? They're burnt now. Thanks for the advice. Until you spoke up, it hadn't occurred to me that they could incriminate me. Seems I've still got a lot to learn. Why did you have to butcher the girl? Because I found out she was going to you two. I've got my own informants out on the street, you know. Something else I learned from you. Don't you dare compare yourself to Mr. Holmes. <laughs> Why not? I have a damn sight more in common with him than you have. You disgusting little... Oh, Lestrade, <laughs> enough's enough. Ah. When I discovered Radcliffe's dossier on Ferrers with all its detailed information, you knew there was a good chance that it mentioned your father by name. It was the only thing that linked me to Ferrers. So naturally, I had to destroy it. I made a good burglar. Except for the small detail that you walked right into my trap. As I said, still a lot to learn. Well, did it? Did it what? Did Radcliffe's evidence implicate me? I brought it along for you, Lestrade. Yeah. Yeah, see for yourself, Dawkins. Yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> What's so damn funny? <laughs> oh, that's so clever. Oh, it's wonderful. Almost worthy of me. Thank you. Well, what is this? What's he talking about? Probably the fact that those papers are all blank. How long had you known about Dawkins' father? Uh, the name cropped up in one of the newspaper reports. But if you knew about the link, why set that trap? Well, it might have been pure coincidence. I, I could have set out as good a case against the Radcliffe boy or the dead man's daughter come to that. So that's why you had me tell Alice Ferrers about the evidence? Which I've no doubt you did with your customary sincerity. Well, of course I did, since at that stage you hadn't bothered to tell me it was all fake. It was essential that she believe you. She could, she could well have been the killer. Uh, mind you, there was one highly significant piece of evidence. Ah, here we are. I knew I had a picture of it somewhere. Ah, you see? Ah. Wide tapering blade, not too long, and that cross piece. Square section, curled up at one end and down at the other. Now, what sort of knife is it? I've never seen anything like it before. Yes, it's an unusual feature, isn't it? That guard, hmm. found in some French and Italian weapons from the late 16th century, but preserved in only one place now. What you're looking at is a picture of the ceremonial dress dagger of a London fireman. Good heavens. Shh. Well, he obviously saw it as the perfect instrument for revenge. Yes, well, uh, there is a certain logic to it. Yes. <laughs> what a waste. What, Ferrers? The girl? No, oh, Dawkins. That mind, that intelligence, it could have risen high. What sort of mind is it that kills a man simply because he happens to own a particular house? Murders have been committed for far less. Ah. Sobering, isn't it? to think that one isolated incident can ruin so many lives. There's no armour against fate, as the old poet said. Ring for some tea, there's a good chap. In The Ferrers Documents, Sherlock Holmes was played by Clive Merrison and Dr. John Watson by Andrew Sachs. Constable Dawkins was played by Thomas Arnold, Inspector Lestrade by Stephen Thorne, Robert Ferrers by Jonathan Taffler, Alice Ferrers by Don Le Hughes, George Radcliffe by Gunnar Cawthery, Mrs. Radcliffe by Janice Aqua, and Shinwell Johnson by Dan Starkey. Other parts were played by members of the cast. The violinist was Leonard Friedman. The Ferrer's Documents was written by Bert Cools from a reference in the short story The Priory School by Sir Arthur Conan Doyle. The director was Patrick Rayner. <laughs>